Welcome to Motalk, the program where we bring you cars, bikes, adventure, classics, motorsport, and indeed whatever wheels that have torque. Here's a quick look at what we have in store for you this week. Sweden's latest compact luxury challenger, the Volvo S60. And in-depth coverage of one of the biggest motorsports events of the year, Fox Hill 2013. The compact executive class is dominated by just three cars. If you are looking in this particular class worldwide, the advice is always the same. It's either buy a BMW 3 Series, an Audi A4 or a Mercedes C-Class. Like the German Luftwaffe squadrons of World War II, these three German cars absolutely dominate this category. And conventional advice has it that if you pick anything else, you are a bit of an idiot. But what if you are a different kind of buyer? Say you've done all the research and you know for certain that you do not want to follow the herd that's heading towards the German showrooms. Well, in that case, what we have here just might be the car for you. It's the new Volvo S60. And as soon as you look at it, you can tell that this is not your grandfather's Volvo. As a day-to-day -day runner, say on the run to work or the school run, and that kind of everyday driving that most people would do, the S60 adapts well enough. It's smooth, comfortable, and easy to maneuver in most tight spaces. Things like the reverse camera and a very effective parking sensor system mean that maneuvering it around is no trouble at all. Now, even the standard S60, riding 16-inch wheels, is a firm riding car, much more so than a Mercedes C-Class or even a 3 Series. But this version, with the R-Design kit, 18-inch wheels and run-flat tyres, is a whole other level. On everything but the absolute smoothest tarmac, it remains permanently busy. And on the average Sri Lankan road, it gets almost too uncomfortable. Even right now, the road that we're on is not the smoothest. And you can see the car is moving up and down much more so than you'd expect it to. Of course, all this is in quest of a more connected and sporty drive. But the trade-off is that you have to be ready to put up with this all the time. If you want a smooth riding car then, I'd advise you to not opt for the R-Design kit. So we've established that the R-Design S60 is not exactly a cushy luxury car. So then, we have to hope that it is a good car to drive. Only one way to find out. Despite the body kit, the engine in this example is actually a diesel. It's Volvo's 2.0-litre turbocharged 4-cylinder, which is in a lot of their models. And in this particular adaptation, it's supposed to put out 163 bhp and 400 newton meters of torque from just above idle. What those numbers mean is, no matter where you are in the rev range, a flick of an anchor and the car just leaps. So if you want to make a quick overtake or just put your foot down and go, this engine really has it all going for it. The published figures give a 0 to 100 kilometers an hour time of 8 and a bit seconds. But if anything, this car feels much, much faster than that. The highlight is the in-gear acceleration. Foot down and just boom, it goes. The top speed is supposed to be somewhere in the range of 250 kilometers an hour, and that's entirely believable. And remember, this is a diesel. It's just insane. The engine's impressive enough, but where the R-Design S60 really shines is its handling. All the tweaks, the lowered suspension, big wheels, and grippier tires work together superbly. And this car is a cornering champion. No matter how sharp the bend or what speed you're moving at, 
it just feels like it's magnetized to the road. It sticks and goes around the corner, no matter what you're doing. It's just absolutely brilliant, this car. For the first time in a long time then, Volvo have made a car that is amazing fun to drive. But of course, being a Volvo, the traditional qualities that people look for aren't overlooked. It is among the safest cars in its segment. It comes equipped with the full range of airbags, all the electronic drive aids that you could think of, plus some things that you don't get in other competitors. Like for example, it has something called city safety, where if you're going through town and say a pedestrian jumps in front of your car unexpectedly, or a car in front of you slows down without you realizing it, the car can detect such an obstacle and ideally brake to a complete halt. Things like that are what give Volvo its edge in safety and why it is considered the company that is still at the leading edge of protecting its passengers. So there we have the story of the Volvo S60 R design. As we've seen, it's great fun to drive, very comfortable and very practical. In other words, it matches the German trio turn for turn in all the important areas. But the X factor, what really makes this Volvo stand out from the Germans, is the simple fact that it is exclusive. Even in our market with our tax structure, the German trio is everywhere. 320Ds, A4 diesels and C-classes can almost be seen on every other corner these days. But if you buy an R design S60, you can be assured that you'll have the only one on the block. And that level of exclusivity is worth it in itself. we bring you the big one, the Fox Hill Supercross 2013. It's an event that attracts crowds from across the island and it's been doing so for 21 years. And it is arguably the most prominent event on our motorsports calendar. This year's event was conducted by the newly formed SLADA, that's S-L-A-D-A, as opposed to SLADA, the S-L-A-R-D-A-R. Confused? We don't blame you. But let's just say that the new acronym stands for the Sri Lanka Autosports Drivers Association. With that aside, let's just get on to the action, of which there was plenty. First off was the SLN Up 2000cc event. This class usually provides very close racing as they are very equally matched machines and test driver skills to the very limit. Now front wheel drive super minis aren't always the first thing that comes to mind when you think of gravel racing cars, but here they are as always, providing quite a show. After a close battle, the race was finally won by Rohit Rajapaksha with Uddhika Di Silva coming second and Ushan Silva ending up third. The SLN Ford Laser class proved to be its usual mix of fast action and high drama. This class is always noted for all the pushing and shoving and high competitiveness of the drivers. And as usual, it provided a treat for spectators. A 
tightly fought battle ended with Upulwan Serasinghe taking the checkered flag with Kushan Peeris ending up second and Kausha Samrasinghe coming third. Of course the event that everyone is really there to see is the big one the SLGT event with the fastest cars of them all. And this year's event featured so many entries that it was decided to have two separate heats before a final consisting of only the best finishers. Lining up for the first of these heats was the fastest driver in qualifying Ishraq Wahab, followed by Narayan Kumar of India and Dilan Seniviratna. Favourite Aravinda Premadasa was not to be seen because he unfortunately blew his engine the day before. After not the best of starts from Isha, Dilan Seniviratna managed to leap into the lead followed by Indian sensation Narayan Kumar and Dinesh Jayawardhana. However, Ishraq managed to claw back the lead and eventually regained it, leaving Dilan and Narayan in a thrilling battle for second place. Unfortunately, it all ended horribly as Dilan hit the embankment late in the race, millimeters away from the chasing Narayan. The result was absolutely spectacular to watch, but horrifying. We are glad to say though, both drivers walked away unscathed. After the eventful first race, race number two started with Pasindu Piris on the front row. And despite him blowing his engine the day earlier, thanks to mechanics he had managed to fit a new engine just in time for the start of this race. Also returning to the track was Dinesh Dehrago, who admitted that this may be the last time he's seen on Sri Lankan tracks for a while at least. Ashan Silva was also in the mix along with many others. lap itself, Kapila lost his car in a similar manner to Dilan earlier and the stricken car proceeded to take out Rohit Rajapaksha's brand new STI 10. What followed was a very unfortunate case of several preventable accidents. The ultimate responsibility for this unfortunate chain of events of course is up to interpretation. Anyway, the race was restarted and Pasindu Piris went on to win from Dinesh and Ashan, paving the way for the final. Well, passing to defending champion, of course, uh, he's a well-seasoned, very experienced driver, and uh, Ashan, Ashan Silva. Next up was the truck and jeep event, which was also quite spectacular, with these high-powered 4x4 machines 
embracing the notion of speed in its entirety. In the end, it was Ishraq Wahab who ran away with the lead and managed to make it a second win for the day. And that's Manjula coming through. He just managed to keep that place. The Super Motard, up to 450cc motorbike class, provided its usual mix of action and skill at Fox Hill. As riders manhandle these powerful two wheel steeds around the challenge track. Vedisinghe ended up taking the checkered flag with Ananda Vedisinghe second and Suraj Pereira third. Next up are the SLH racers that took their civics to the track yet again. With their screaming Honda VTEX providing a soundtrack that resonated throughout the years. Sajjad Zuhair who won with Ashan Silva finishing second and Damit Vijay Singh a third. If you are a fan of Subaru but for some reason you don't like to see them on the track with Mitsubishis, well there's an event that's right up your street. It is the Subaru Legacy up to 2200cc event. These flat 4 engine machines with their low centers of gravity and all wheel drive adapted well to the gravel Fox Hill track and ran a tight race overall.
Despite some tough competition, Manjula Shiran, driving for Aero Racing, drove a well judged race from the start and ended up taking his maiden victory. <laughs> The SLS category is another very popular class and as expected it featured more action and drama. The heavily modified machines racing here are put through some intense action and they did not disappoint. Favourites for this event, Kaushalya Samrasinghe and Shafraj Junaid were locked in a very serious battle for a number of laps. Sadly, it ended in the Easy Racing Grand Civic. Safra today, the only all-wheel drive Civic that has raced in this country retiring from the track for good. Yes, as you can see, this was definitely a write-off. After that incident, Nadira Jinasena took the checkered flag, with Chanta Suravira ending up second and Misaka Naveen coming third. Here we see the Group MX motocross bikes up to 125cc two-stroke and up to 250cc four-stroke. Besides the mouthful of a name, this was another event that the competition was extremely heated. Although Gayan Sandaruan and Ishan Disanayaka mounted a spirited challenge, at the end it was Shehan Si Adhikari who prevailed and took home the win. And with this, he was crowned champion rider at Fox Hill 2013. And finally, we have the best of the best. The SLGT final race, featuring the top drivers from the two previous heats. The crowd was expecting a lot from this race and they didn't disappoint. At the very start, Pasinda Pires had to retire as his gearbox apparently gave up on him. After that, Ishaq Wahab, who was the favourite to win, charged off to a strong start but he eventually could not hold off the charging Ashan Silva in his EVO 3. A slight miscalculation saw Ishaq crashing out late in the race. After Ishaq's exit, it was Ashan Silva all the way, with Dinesh Dehragoda second and Rizvi Farooq third. With the result of this race, Ashan Silva was crowned champion driver at Fox Hill 2013. With that, we wrap up the action from Fox Hill Supercross 2013. Not using the proper clamps could lead to your hoses sealing improperly or in some cases even damage your hoses quite badly. So it makes sense for you to look into using high quality hose clamps. And of course, Worth has a full range of hose clamps in different sizes that are among the highest quality products that you can find in the market. Suranga is here to tell us a bit more about what makes both hose clamps stand out from the rest. As you said, Sajeev, uh, the prevention is better than cure. So people tend to uh, ignore small, small things on their vehicles. So likewise, the, when, uh, the horse slip, uh, if you are not using the proper horse slip, you have to face with a lot of problems. So that's why we have come up with uh, the German quality, worth horse slip. If you take the uh, worth horse slip, it has a lot of features. A symmetrical body leads to a uh, even distribution of force and clamp head does not tilt away during the tightening smooth and rounded edges prevents injury and horse damage strap body come up with uh, a galvanized seal so it does uh, it prevent corrosion 
and it includes uh, 18 size of uh, horse lips. So, so you can use a uh, particular size to the particular horse. So it's clear that there is a worth horse clamp for almost every application. So, are these widely available? Can they be bought yes. anywhere? If you want to buy a worth horse lip, you can go to uh, any spare part shops or top leading workshop and car agents. As Suranga mentioned earlier, horse clamps are tiny things that most of us would not check. But now that you've heard about it, it makes sense to check yours out. And if they're not good, use worth products. That's our worth top tip for this week. Mm -hmm.